Hey everyone! One of the things that I love the most about Blender is the node system. And since I can't help myself, here's another Eyes Made with Nodes video. This time we're making Mario's eyes. Look at him! We'll upload this blend file to our Patreon for anyone who's interested. First, let's set up our scene real quick. Make sure your render engine is set to Eevee. Under color management, change the view transform from filmic to standard. This will make the colors in your viewport reflect the actual colors of the texture, so I find that helps. I'm going to create this texture on a plane, so in object mode, delete the cube with X. And with Shift A, add a plane. Go into top view with numpad 7, and switch to rendered view. Expand this bottom area, and switch over to the shader editor. Let's also open up the material tab over here. We're going to create a new material, which can be done here or here. Probably some other places too. So click one of these new buttons, and now we have a material. Also make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled in the preferences. This is the default Blender shader. I just want to use a basic emission shader, so select the principled BSDF, hit Shift S, and navigate to Shader Emission. Our plane is now changed to the color in this field. We want it to be completely white, so click the color box and drag this bar up to the top. If you want a quick, significantly more in-depth explanation on what nodes can all do, check out our Pixelation with Nodes in Blender video. And there's also a bunch of other excellent node tutorials on YouTube. Now we're going to start adding layers of colors to build the eye texture. Just like adding objects, you can add nodes by hitting Shift A. What we're looking for is a mix shader. Drop it here. Select this emission node and hit Shift D to duplicate it. Change the color to a dark blue. I'll put the hex code of the color that I use on screen. Connect this emission shader to the bottom socket on the mix shader. This factor slider allows us to mix these two shaders by any factor of our choice. So at factor 1, we're using the bottom blue input, and at 0, the top white input. It's important to note that there's a thousand ways to do everything in the Blender node system, so there's no right or wrong way as long as you get the result that you want. We want part of our image to be white and part to be blue, so let's make a mask. Add a gradient texture, switch it to spherical, connect the color to the factor. Add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. These nodes can be quickly added by hitting Ctrl T with Node Wrangler active. Use the object output of the texture coordinate and connect to the vector input on the mapping node, and connect these nodes up. You can see our gradient in effect up here. Currently the gradient gradually goes from 0 at the plane's edge to 1 at the center. We want to change this, so let's add a color ramp here. The color ramp by default hasn't changed anything. We're going to come back and adjust it a bit, but first, these three nodes in this order are going to be used a lot. So in the interest of organization, I want to make a node group out of them that we can reuse multiple times. Box select all three, hit Ctrl G to make a group. This group input allows us to input values into our node group. Connect the empty socket to the location and scale inputs here. And we only need the color output, so the rest of this is good to go. Tab out, and here's our node group. If you duplicate a node group, and then tab into one and change anything, all the other instances of that group change as well. So creating custom node group inputs like this allows you to change the values on each instance individually. We want a hard edge on our color transition, so click this drop down and change linear to constant. Grab this white color stop and drag it to about here. By inputting values here, we can change our gradient's location and scale. Let's add another color layer. Duplicate this color ramp. Duplicate this mix shader. And also duplicate an emission shader. Change the color to a light blue and connect here. I'm going to use the original gradient for the new mix shader and make a new gradient for the first mix shader. I want to have a small band of dark blue around this oval, so we can use the same node group and then just adjust the color ramp. We've also got a lot more to do with this light blue color, but we'll come back to that later since it's the most involved part. If you want to be really organized, you can add frame nodes and drag stuff into them. You can even name these frames over here. Duplicate this mix node again. Duplicate this node group. If you have yours in a frame like mine, you can hit Alt-P to remove it from the frame. Let's use a color ramp again. And add an emission shader. Set it to black. Connect everything up. Switch the color ramp to constant and adjust the stop location. Change the gradient scale to match Mario's pupil shape. Let's do the whole thing again for another color layer. This time let's mix two shaders before mixing them into the chain. Switch the top one to a dark blue. Select and duplicate these two nodes. Connect to the mix shader. And adjust the color ramp. Adjust the location and scale.
For this factor, we can't use the node group because we need a linear gradient. So let's add a texture coordinate, mapping, gradient, and color ramp. Connect everything up. Swap the position of the color stops. Rotate by 90 degrees on the Z axis and adjust the color ramp. Maybe throw all this in a frame to impress your friends. And these two, why not? Duplicate this node group before adding a frame for these nodes. Let's duplicate the mix shader and add a color ramp. Duplicate this emission shader and Alt-P it. Edit the color ramp and then adjust the location. Guess what's next? Yep, another color layer. Duplicate all the things. This time, let's use two color ramps and connect one to the shader input. And one to the factor. Shift right click drag to add reroute nodes. Adjust the location and the color ramp, move these stops very close together. But leave it set to linear so that there's a little bit of a blend. Adjust this color ramp as well, and change this black color stop to a light blue. Add more frames! You can never have too many frames! FRAMES! So this is getting pretty close. Now we have to create the iris coloration, which can be done a ton of ways. Since it's a fairly complicated pattern, I personally just texture it, but it's more fun to try to use only nodes. Add some reroute nodes in here to make the material easier to read, if you want to. We need a bunch of colors, so copy this emission shader a few times. Change this color to a way darker blue, and this one to a slightly darker blue. Connect these together with a mix shader. We're going to use another linear gradient, so you could copy these nodes, or you can add them manually, or use Ctrl T, however you want to do it. Connect everything. Duplicate the mix shader, and then mix this whole pile of nodes in here. Use the top input for this darker color gradient. If you drop the factor to zero, we can see how the gradient looks. And right now it looks... not good. So I want to adjust the location and rotation. Let's drop all of this in a frame and name it. Reroute nodes and organize whatever you want. Now let's make the factor for the lighter blue color. We want a radial repeating pattern. If you're willing to put in a ton of time, you can get this looking exact. But let's just go for a quick approximation. Add a gradient and wave texture node. Switch the gradient to radial. Connect the radial gradient directly to the factor to see what's happening. Now if the wave texture is added to the chain, the wave repeats radially. You can adjust the scale to change how often the pattern repeats. Adjust the settings as necessary, I messed around with it for a bit, but this is ultimately what I decided on. I want to adjust the brightness of the bands based on the Y location. So add a gradient texture and a separate XYZ node. Use the Y output as the vector and add a color ramp. We want to mix this into our factor, which we can do a number of ways, but I chose to use a math node. Switch it to multiply and connect to the bottom socket. Swap the positions of the stops on the color ramp, change the interpolation to ease, and add another math node here. I want to add some iris style variation to this texture so it's not so clearly a bunch of repeating bands. Let's create some room here for more nodes. Add a noise texture and a color ramp. To mix this part in, I'm going to use a mix RGB node. Adjust the color ramp and the noise texture until you get a nice noisy iris pattern. It can help to turn the mix factor to 1, so all we can see is this noise texture chain. Move in the stop so that the color transitions less gradually. And adjust the noise texture as desired. Now, drop the factor on the mix node. And organize your nodes a bit. Looking at the original eye texture, some things are slightly different. There's a darker band around the pupil, and some brighter highlights in the iris color, so feel free to try your hand at adding as many more layers as you want. But, as is, this eye will appear virtually identical to the original in most renders, unless you're doing an extreme close-up or something. So, there we have it. 
You can use this node group directly on your model, or probably a better idea is to bake it and then use the texture on your model. If you'd like to know how to bake textures, we cover that at the end of our video, Drawing Anime Eyes with Nodes, where we make Marnie from Pokemon's Eyes. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and please like the video. Leave us a comment on what you'd like to see us make. If you'd like to help our channel grow, share the video. If you want to support us, we have a Patreon. Thank you again, stay safe, I love you all, goodbye!